If you're on the fence as to whether you should build a brand new home or buy an established property, then this is the video for you. In this one, I talk about some of the positives as well as some of the negatives either way and share my experience having done both for myself with my wife. <laughs> Beautiful, so let's talk about new first. Like what are some of the positives that you've noticed around building brand new? Well, the obvious one is the maintenance issues. Building a brand new property, you're not gonna have the tenants reaching out and asking for any of these maintenance requests on a regular basis. So it's kind of that set and forget, active strategy in the beginning to try and get the brand new property built. But as soon as you get the keys and hand them over to your property manager, you can then just relax and not actually worry too much about the property. And also on top of that, you get some kick-ass tax benefits as well, which is like depreciation where you go to a tax depreciation specialist, they'll come to the property, do a full report, give that report to your account and then your account will be able to save you additional money on tax, which can actually increase the cash flow from building those brand new properties as well. So they're two of the things that I absolutely love about building brand new properties is obviously the ongoing maintenance costs and some of those tax benefits. But look, I could be speaking a little bit out of turn because I still haven't actually built a property yet. I intend to in the future, which I can't wait for, but you've obviously got a lot more experience doing this a few times in the past. So what are some of the things that you love about building a brand new joint? Um, as someone who unfortunately likes to be in control of things. <laughs> um, I love the fact that you can design it. Like if you can imagine it, then you can create it. And mm -hmm. I think as an investor, like the idea of a flat piece of land mm -hmm. and creating something from nothing is super appealing to me. My wife's an interior designer as well. So like we really enjoyed that part of the process. And then walking through it every second day is super fun watching it come to life as well. Um, I also love the fact that you can design what the market wants today. Mm. So there's a lot of properties that were built in the last 50 years in Australia, whether it's Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Brizzy, that just don't feel good. Their floor plans are fucked. Like basically they look so bad. Mm. They're small. Um, so when designing, you can build something with good sized bedrooms, with lots of storage, with open plan living, nice kitchens onto our frescoes and living spaces. And I, I really enjoy that part of it as well. Um, Another thing is obviously the higher rent mm. and the higher quality tenants. Um, I've lived in brand new properties myself and I treat them better than yeah, older properties as a renter. Um, and because they're brand new and in, you know, we're not talking about going and building in greenfield sites here. We're talking about really high quality stuff. Um, you generally get a much higher rent return too because there's less of that stock on the market. Yeah, I love that. And, and, you know, I think that's an important thing to talk about because, you know, that is the negative associated with buying and building a brand new home because if you are going out into these greenfield sites, generally the location isn't as good as where the established properties are. So location is probably one of the most, if not the most important aspects when it comes to property investing. It's going to make you the most money in the long-term future as well. So you've got to be cautious as to where you're executing this strategy because if you're whoop whoop from the CBD on a really small piece of land in a suburb where there's no infrastructure or amenities there, then that can actually hinder your short-term growth and potentially long-term growth as well. So we always prefer to look in established suburbs to build brand new, but how bloody hard is it to find land in established suburbs, right? It's really tricky and uh, you know, I've, I've personally done greenfield site stuff and made, well, if I hadn't have sold them too soon, I would have made really good money on them by now. But, you know, lessons learned. Um, you know, some of the other negatives I see is not everybody can afford to like buy a piece of land, pay interest on it, and then pay interest while you wait for the build. Yeah. And in the current market, a build that used to take five months could take up to 12 or 18 now. So, that's one of the negatives associated with it. And I think those construction issues are gonna be relatively short lived as well, because it's not, we haven't experienced this from sort of 2016 through to 2019. It only really began in 2020, and it was due to the supply chain issues, the lack of access to quality trades people and things like that. But I feel as though a lot of those issues are starting to be resolved and we're coming back to a form of normality, but the new prices is probably a negative as well because, you know, it's a bit of a kick in the nuts when you have to pay 30 <laughs> to 40% more in 2022 than you did in 2019 for the exact same thing. You know, that was my next sort of negative. It is even without the price escalations, um, 
which are, you know, the building industry in Australia didn't really increase their pricing for 15 years. So it was, it's just good to see that those guys are getting what they deserve. But it is more expensive. Like you're buying brand new land for the highest possible point and then you're building. So in most suburbs, a brand new product would be one hundred to sort of five hundred thousand dollars above mm. an established home that might have only been built fifteen or twenty years mm. ago. So it can be a bit more expensive. Um, it can be very difficult to manage a builder. It's like herding a cat or a whole bunch of cats all walking in different directions. And <laughs> I've just like had to let go of that. It's like you pay them, you trust them, you do all the due diligence up front to find the right the right one. Um, and then, you know, you just have to like throw it into the wind and hope that it works out. It's so funny going to a construction site and just seeing what happens during the build. And then you go at the end of it once the landscaping's done, once the paint has all been finished, once the cleaners have been in there to tidy it up and you're just like, hang on a minute, how do these two things come together? <laughs> Fully, bro. Like I've walked into houses a week before handover stressing out. In fact, I'm renovating up the road right now and the place looks like an absolute shit show even though it's been cleaned once already. And I'm just like, I can't see this. Did I make a mistake? And then I bet in two weeks time, it's going to look exactly how I want it to be and the pressure will be off. But I remember when I used to finish these places, I'd walk around with my little, the builder would give me dots <laughs> and, and for defected and I'd walk around and put like a thousand dots out for them to come and rectify. Now is a good tip for anyone out there. There's a company called handovers.com.au. Mm -hmm. They literally, you pay them, they go out and defect the property, produce a report for you and the builder with all of the things the builder needs to fix. They, the builder goes and fixes them and then they come out and do a second inspection to check that it's been done with a second report of anything that wasn't fixed up. So it just takes a lot of that pain away and they notice so many things that I never would. Yeah, it's good to know that it's just a third party as well. Like it's not the builder, the project manager. It's not you with lack of experience doing it. It's like a professional third party that's got, they're just looking at the contract and going, yep, yeah, this needs to be done, that doesn't. And uh, yeah, it makes it look beautiful by the end of it. But, you know, we are more inclined to go for established properties. Um, so we'll move on to talking a little bit more about the pros of purchasing established properties. Why don't you kick it off? You know, the number one thing for me is choice. Um, you know, there's only a very limited amount of land available or knockdown rebuild sites that are affordable for you where there's an entire world of established mm. properties. There's hundreds of thousands of them, millions of them in Australia. Actually, I'm just like hundreds of thousands of homes with 26 million people living in them. <laughs> There's millions of properties in Australia that you can choose from, millions of suburbs. Fucking hell. There's, a, <laughs> oh my God. there's millions of properties to choose from and there's tens of thousands of suburbs, which I absolutely love as well. And I think for me, as somebody who does like choice, I get more control and more choice over what I'm buying as well. I think this overwhelms and this can be a negative as well as a positive. We see it as a positive because we know how to identify markets, suburbs, properties and negotiate. But for the average investor, they find buying established properties a little bit more difficult because of the choice. It's like when you go to the restaurant that's got a massive menu and you don't know what to choose versus the top tier restaurant and they just give you your food. You know what you want. So with land, and it's like, hey, here's this vacant piece of 400 square metres. Do you want to buy it? Because it's the same as every bloody other one out there as well. And here's your choice of your building design because this is what we're doing and this is within your budget at the moment. So it's kind of, you know, one of the pros and cons that, you know, choice is a beautiful thing when you know how to analyse the market, but it can become quite overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for as well. It's so true, man. Like, I love that. Like, now that I understand the market... I like choice, um, but when I was starting out, it was it was extremely overwhelming mm. to think about all those things that I didn't know at the time. Another thing that I like as a pro is you don't have to wait no. for the rent. You don't have to wait for the product and you can see physically what you're getting. Mm. Another massive pro for me is you can actually, if you're handy or you know people that are or you can manage people, then there's potential upside on established homes. You could renovate cosmetically like, you could go structural kitchens, bathrooms. You could add bedrooms, bathrooms as well. You could redo up the outside of the house, mm. decks, pools, fencing. Like you can really add value through the type of property that you buy and a lot of people like that. And with rather than paying the premium to build a brand new property to have that brand new asset, you know, you can purchase those properties at a more affordable price that haven't had the work done to them and manufacture, 
your own value there as well. Now, one of the pros that I love about buying established property is you're generally in the highest quality locations in the area. Um, you know, when our cities and towns were developed way back when, uh, they were always going for the best locations, you know, close to the city, close to the rivers, close to the beaches, close to the hills, close to the hinterland. So you're generally surrounded by the high quality lifestyle locations, the high quality infrastructure like shopping centers, schools, restaurants, cafes, public transport options. And we know all of those things are desirable for the families that are going to be occupying those homes. And with that increased demand, it can actually push prices a little bit higher. And typically because these, these suburbs were developed such a long time ago, where we didn't have as much scarcity with the land. You got much bigger portions of land as well. And we know the powers in the land, not what's sitting on top of it. You wanna control the biggest piece of land that you can, especially knowing with these established properties, you're gonna to have to add some value to it over time. You're gonna to have to maintain and renovate and upgrade at times in the future, but you cannot change that piece of land. So true, man. And you've seen that work in Sydney, Melbourne, Brizzy, any other major capital city in the world. One of the last things that I love about buying established property, <laughs> fucking fuck this video up today, huh, no, is the fact that it's, there's a whole bunch of bloopers here, guys, that I don't know if they're going to be included or not, but I'm just like choking through this. <laughs> Ben's flying out to Bali later tonight, so he's just ready like, to go. Ready to go, mentally, yeah. But um, they are cheaper as well. Like I said, um, you know, you, you've got choice. They are generally like because it's older land that was purchased for a cheaper price point and they're older homes, you can buy them for a more affordable price point. Mm. And as an investor without an unlimited budget that has had to work for all of this stuff myself, like I've always had to like, mm. you know, work with what I could afford to do. For sure. But there's obviously certainly negatives with buying established properties. You know, for me, the maintenance items on my properties have been really overwhelming to deal with, you know, constantly getting messages from my property manager or tenants just asking for, for minor little upgrades. Now, I chose to buy a really crappy house for my strategy and that was naturally going to come with increased maintenance. But it is a reality of buying established properties. You've got to maintain those properties a little bit well. You know, you need to paint, you need to get lawnmowers out there to look after the yards if people are, if the tenants aren't going to do it. You know, your guttering is going to rust over time. Like remember the first property that I bought and there wasn't one piece of the uh, the guttering that wasn't rusted through and it's like, <laughs> so I don't have any gutters on this property. <laughs> and you didn't have a downpipe even if it was connected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was so funny, man. I remember like, I don't know what I'm doing, but my brother-in-law does. He's a builder and I was just holding it up there. I'm like, man, these like, I, I like do like my little weights and he's like. Yeah, just like I'm nothing, like, eh? <laughs> just <laughs> shaking was, away. Rough. There's some negatives associated with buying established though too. Like as you just mentioned with your gutters or the thousand other things that can go wrong on a 30-year-old home, there's more maintenance. You know, roofs, um, hot water heaters, air conditioners, like things that you don't expect and, and from having a whole bunch of properties over time like windows, mm. flooring, kitchens, all of that stuff mm. comes up and it's just part of the cost of the business. We're just talking to LT, a client, we actually just recorded a podcast and a video with him but he's bought a couple of like what you mentioned like great piece of land in great suburbs with houses he'll knock down in the future and he's sort of just going through that you know, just hold on and keep it good enough until he gets it sort of to that point in the future when he can afford to knock it down and fix it up. And the positive to that strategy is the sort of land banking with income. Yeah. So that's both LT and I strategy. It's like get the land, get the location that we want at the most affordable price. And yes, we're going to deal with the maintenance issues. Yes, we're going to have to deal with the lower quality tenants from having a lower quality house. But at the same time, we're getting some income at the moment. So what you were saying is a negative with building brand new is you buy the land and you've got to wait for the building to come. You know, I've acquired the land, I've been able to rent the house out for a, a small amount, but it's helping me pay for the mortgage. And then when I've got the money, I'll be able to come back, knock it down and rebuild a beautiful brand new home. I guess a pro to that as well is the zoning has actually changed for where I purchased the land. And in the future, I'm going to actually be able to do not just a, a brand new home, but maybe a duplex or even potentially a townhouse development. And LT has the same opportunity there as well. So that was not guaranteed when we bought the land, 
but because we chose location over quality of house, we've been able to manufacture even more value there. And where I meant to go, like I just went completely off the rails and like my train We're of thought on. was like, L I'm back. You know, what LT said and what I meant to say before I just lost it was like he bought a place and it has grown up in capital and, you know, yes, he's maybe had to spend 10 grand in maintenance in seven years on a place, but the place is worth 500,000 bucks more than he paid for it. So the benefit versus, you know, the risk is absolutely worth it. I think the other two things that I so, sort of see as negatives mm. on an established older property is the government, and you can have a look on their website, has just, you know, from a tax perspective, there's just nowhere near as many depreciation benefits there and you can talk to your accountant about that. Um, and also the fact that it generally does rent for a little bit less as well per week and you sometimes if the home's not in the best condition, Although, like, you seem to have bucked the train the other week when we walked through your places. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Amazing tenants. But, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get. On some of the more established homes, it's a bit more of a roll of the dice because people can get away with damaging the property and call it wear and tear a bit more. And, you know, I've, I've gone through that myself a bunch. For sure. But just like anything in life, there's pros and cons, there's sacrifices and concessions that we need to make to get what we want. But for us, we are not too phased as to whether you go for a brand new property or established property. For us, it's more about the long-term strategy, identifying the right market at the right time, identifying the right suburb within that market, You know, purchasing the best possible property that you can afford within those areas because we're long-term investors. I don't intend to hold these properties for five or 10 years and then flog them off. I intend to hold these properties forever and a property that's brand new today, in 15 years time with tenants in it, it's going to feel old and is going to need maintenance items fixed up anyway. So, you know, it really doesn't really matter to me about what is on top of the land as long as you're nailing the land and the location itself. Without a doubt, man. I think, you know, regardless of where you're at, um, go and talk to your accountant, your financial advisor, your friends, like learn a bit more. Um, some of the mistakes that I made when I was thinking about these sorts of things in the past were just rushing into a decision because I wanted to make one. Mm. Um, when it comes to brand new and existing, there's so many good and bad things to both. Um, for those of you who are thinking about potentially buying a property at some point in the next 12 months, especially up here in Southeast Queensland, we'd love the opportunity to offer you a one-on-one -on -one strategy session where we can talk about where you are today, where you'd like to be longer term. We can deeply educate you on the market and then you can take that and smash it on your own and go build something or buy something established, or maybe you can become one of the small number of people we work with each month and we can talk about the pros and cons of each for your situation and then you can go out there with our support and absolutely make it happen and nail all of those pro positives that we think along with a whole bunch of other stuff that we've talked about in previous content. But either way, we truly do wish you all the best and hope longer term you make good decisions and end up where you want to be financially. Woo! That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Have a spin. Bro. Yeah. Oh, it's sweaty. So sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, though. Oh.